convey your word to the world. Yes, Lord, we pray for each and every person that's listening to this broadcast, Lord. May you be, may they have get edification, Lord, from the education that's being bring brought forth. Lord, and we just want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, we're alive. Okay, you kind of want to go over... Um, Okay, we can kind of go, go over it. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Good evening, and welcome to Truth Seekers Read. Uh, this evening, we are we're going to address the topic of Christians, to be or not to be. Also, we want to just uh, give you quick information that we stream live on Facebook and YouTube, and we have a conference dial-in number, 248-607-0611. We broadcast every Tuesday at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., Thursdays and Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and on here we will address all biblical topics uh, as far as heresy, false doctrine, cults, the BHI, the NOI, uh, the name and claim it. Everybody who uh, anybody who speaks false doctrine against the word. In other words, we go where error goes. That's right. Wherever error goes, we shall be there. Also, we want to uh, address uh, books. Selling something nobody needs. False doctrine clean me up, but God saved me by... Pastor Robert Anderson. Amen. All right. Also, Essential Simple But Biblical by Pastor Robert L. Anderson and Pastor Emery Moss Jr. You can pick these books up online. Right. At uh, www.truthseekersread.com. Uh, you can also pick it up at Amazon.com. Uh, and if you're local, you can pick it up at Baker's Bible Bookstore and God's World. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. No problem. To be or not to be a Christian is the million dollar question. Amen. First, I thought that we would start by looking at uh, synagogue. Because before you had the, for, the new, uh, for the New Testament, or well, actually, we're, we're going to kind of get in that a little bit. Somewhere uh, during the uh, intermediate period, we see that's when these synagogues start popping up. You don't find them back during the uh, the Old Testament. Testament. Okay. What what did they have during the Old Testament? Well, they had the temple. Right. Mm -hmm. right. They had the temple. So, because the temple uh, wasn't there, well, well, it was there, but uh, they, they it, it once it, at one time it was destroyed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So then they had you know little other meeting places that they de they de they developed so that uh, the Jews could meet uh, in a corporate worship setting. Right. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> and as we look at this, the synagogue, transliteration of the Greek word synagogue, meaning a gathering together. The word synagogue is usually the Greek rendering of Hebrew words in the Old Testament that speak of the assembling or assembly of the people. In the Old Testament, synagogue occurs only in Psalm 74, 8 uh, as the meeting place where it is a transliteration of Hebrew. It is not definite that the reference has its present connotation. Reference to destruction of the temple. Okay, I'm going to hold right here. I want to see what we got out there. Uh, oh, how you doing, Sister Pat? Hi, how are you? Oh, fine, fine, fine. Let's see if we got anybody else. Uh, we got Sister Pat. And is that Val? Yes. Oh, good, good, good. All right. Then. Yep. So, so uh, I'm pretty much in the driver's seat, seat tonight, so I put my other screen up. I can't really see uh, when somebody join in, so... But uh, hopefully we can hear it when they, if they, I think it does a bell when they join in. Right. Okay, let me just get back to my other screen. Okay. Synagogue. The Greek term synagogue is used frequently in the LLX for the assembly of Israel and occurs 56 times in the New Testament. The basic sense is a place of meeting and thus it came to denote a Jewish place of worship and instruction in the Torah. Right, and that's important because many times when you're talking to the Hebrew Israelites, they always want to try to entrap us about Jesus going into the synagogue and 
Paul going into what they did. But as as Minister pointed out, uh, and uh, uh, well, should I say both ministers? Because we got a, we got a crew here, and, <laughs> and both of them be add, adding good information to the table. As they pointed out mm -hmm. last week, is what did they do when they went into the synagogue? Amen. <laughs> right, Amen. right. So, but it's important to 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 know uh, um, how this started. How what what how this came about? The Hebrew equivalent of the Greek noun is Knesset, a gathering of any persons or things for any purpose. In the scriptures, it is a gathering of individuals of a locality for worship or common action. And you can see this in Luke chapter 12, verse 11, and chapter 21, verse 12. It came to refer to the building in which such meetings were held. Mm -hmm. now, now, real quick, I'm going to ask a question. As far as when we say the church, what's the difference here? It came to refer, talking about the synagogue, it came to refer to a building in which such meetings were held. Uh, uh, I know uh, well, yeah, actually both of us, we got, we got the whole team on here, Pesmo's team on here. Right. So I know that y'all can uh, uh, contrast that to the, to the church in the New Testament. Oh. What were you saying? The church? I'm trying to get the your, your last your last statement. It came talking about the second. It came oh. to refer to the building in which such meetings were he held. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, today people refer to the church as the building, but we know that the church is actually the body right. of Christ. Right. That's, That's right. right. Uh -huh. Yep. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Synagogues came into being in the Persian period and possibly as early as the exile. Mm -hmm. Neither Old Testament nor New Testament furnishes any definite information about the origin of the synagogue, nor do the apocry apocryphal books mention any burning of synagogues during the persecutions of Antiochus, Ephesians, in the second century B.C. Uh, let me ask a question. Um, um, it, it wouldn't be a something, but we'll say a, a people group. What's another people group that we didn't see in the Old Testament? It also came came about during that, this, this period. You see, have Sadducees and Pharisees. Oh, oh she must have been looking at my notes. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to sound looking over my shoulder. Absolutely. <laughs> thank, thank you, Sister Bell. <laughs> Many see the oh exile. I'll be paying attention sometimes. <laughs> Many see the mm -hmm. exile when worship in the temple at Jerusalem was an impossibility at the time when the synagogue arose. The oldest references to synagogues are in Greek. Inscriptions from Egypt of the 3rd century BC at Delos in the Aegean there was a synagogue in the 1st century BC termed a prosuch, a place of prayer. The Greek inscription of Theodos, a ruler of the synagogue, Ar Archis Synagogus, found in Jerusalem and archaeological discoveries in Palestine prove the existence of synagogues there in the first century. What's a, what's a good reference from that? Now, and I know he, he read a lot, but uh, something it told, that, that uh, where it says the oldest reference to synagogues are in Greek. What's a good indication out, out of that? And hopefully y'all, I'm trying to ask the question without giving it right. that we didn't see it in the Hebrew. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 And, right, right, right. Which is another point for, uh, for, for the uh, Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites. Right, right. right. Oh, well, the Holy Spirit is good. <laughs> in Nehemiah 8, 1 through 8, the post community gathered in Jerusalem, and in Ezra the scribe, the priest brought the law, read it from a wood, read it from a wooden pulpit, gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And as Ezra and as Ezra blessed the Lord, the people bowed their heads and worshiped. Now, uh, something today that you might... Oh, somebody got a comment? Yeah, what was that scripture, Nehemiah what? Chapter 8, verse 1 through 8. Uh -huh. so, oh, so, the okay. wooden, so the wooden pulpit, what, what, would you, what, would you, what would you take from that? The altar? Yeah, which we see today mm -hmm. in our churches. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. These were the basic elements of what came to be synagogue worship. Synagogues were not intended to replace the, the cultic center in Jerusalem, but rather to be places of corporate prayer and instruction in the Torah, led not necessarily by priests or Levites, but by those members of the community who are qualified by their learning. Mm 
Right. Now, let me ask, uh, in, in the church, can anybody just come in and, and go to teaching from the perspective of, of a pastor? Definitely not. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, As a matter of fact, what verse would you what, what verse would you kind of pull up to to, to kind of bag you up on that? Okay. And it could be a lot of them. And I don't have no specific one in mind. I, I'll help out a little bit for a second time. Uh, wool, wool, since you, you ain't gonna let the wolf. Oh, <laughs> man, you keep oh, okay. First Timothy. Right, yeah. right. And so even when people, so today, even when people say they believe in God, uh, uh, depending on their belief system, you're not gonna give them turn your pulpit over to them. As a matter of fact, I don't think you should. Would. No, you should. If you, with common sense, you don't. You know, see, and that's the same thing that we say with. Uh, uh, I always like it, uh, uh, Mr. Andrew. We tease him sometimes about the foxhole. I want to know who in the foxhole with me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Teaching which consisted mainly of reading of prescribed portions of the Torah. Generally, with comments, was the lo was the focal point of Sabbath meetings in synagogues, and you can see this in Luke chapter four, verses fifteen through nineteen, Acts thirteen fifteen, fifteen twenty one, and seventeen two. So, so excuse me, can you look down a little bit? Oh yeah, sure. I'm sorry, I'm just reading. Okay, Luke chapter four, verses fifteen through nineteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Luke four, verses fifteen through nineteen. Acts chapter 13, verse 15. Okay. Acts chapter 15, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And Acts chapter 17, verse 2. And that tells us what? That exactly. teaching which consisted mainly of okay. reading of prescribed portions of the Torah, mm -hmm. generally with comments, was the focal point of Sabbath meetings in the synagogue. So, so in other words, what, what, what he's doing, what this section is doing is really showing you how they did it then. And then you can see a little bit of how we do it today and how similar, right. how similar the practices are. Right. So, right. you know, back in that day, they would read a particular, uh, usually it was, it was a prescribed portion of the Torah that they read. And then mm -hmm. they would give some focal points or they would, they would elaborate on what they read. Right out okay. of that, and so those scriptures that that, that uh, pastor gave you, or minister gave you, was that was the examples of that being done. Right. And now, now with that in mind, though, keep in mind, we're gonna see some some things. I'm glad you went there, pastor, because I was gonna ask the course, but I was trying to wait a little farther because you're gonna see some things that they did in the synagogue that we don't do in the church, okay. and that's gonna be real important. So, thank, thank pastor, because so, so kind of keep these things in mind that you're. Gleaming as we go along about what they're doing, because then you that way you'll be able to identify the the, the difference. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. The synagogues, okay. Were, okay. the synagogues were the focal point of the Jewish community in any town with a Jewish population, Palestinian or di diaspora, and were used for judicial functions, including punishment of Jewish violators of the Jewish law, Matthew. Chapter ten, verse seventeen. Uh, I don't know. What that's this. Sarah. Don't worry. Don't worry oh, about yeah. it. Yeah, that's Sarah. Yeah. 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 And other yeah. one, yeah. and other yeah. one, <laughs> which, which I'm sure that most folks on this on this conference uh, don't don't read the. But that, 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 that well, we shouldn't say it like that because <laughs> we should know what's in the pocketbook. You know, now I haven't read the whole thing, but I'm talking about from the perspective of being able to give an answer because some folks gonna bring it up. Right, right. And right. And, and we so Amen. we look at it from a defense perspective. Right. Showing showing right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm like, what book is that? Right, right, but right. It's all right. right, right. James, Forgive me, chapter two, <laughs> <laughs> two through four, are concerned with comportment in synagogue. Mm. In synagogue, right, right. And see, because most of the time they figure that oh, the Christians don't know that. Right. So now, what what is comportment in synagogues? What does that mean? Where are you at? Uh, uh, at the bottom. It says we're uh, punishment of Jewish violators of the Jewish law, and then it says are concerned with comportment. It says and yeah, just, that's judgment, right? Discipline or structure right, or right, 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 right. And 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 right. and, and, and a matter of fact, you already brought it to one of the words. How they did it, we don't have no judgment right. seat in the right in the church. <laughs> in, the, in the church, right? right. <laughs> Good point, Pastor. Yeah. yeah. 
Was Jesus a Christian? Well, hold it, before we go there, mm -hmm. and, and see the other thing, we're not saying that that's bad what we're seeing because remember, it was the place where pretty much everything went on as far mm -hmm. as it, uh, mm -hmm. managing the, the Jewish body mm -hmm. of believers. Right. Right, right. The civil, everything pretty much went on there except for, for when they had to go to the Roman government mm -hmm. <laughs> that was over there. Right. So does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. Because I want to make sure, because we'll, we'll slow down and mm -hmm. it, it's something that we need to explain. Because I, I, I don't want to just throw it out there, well, why is he talking about the synagogue, synagogue, you know? And so we're going back and look at it because these people are making a big deal mm -hmm. about what Paul and what Jesus did into it. So we're going back looking and then that way we can see what we can understand what went on. Mm -hmm. We can understand what they did right. when they went. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, he says, was Jesus a Christian? This question in itself is oxymoronic. For, for good, but why would that question be uh, an oxymoronic? Because he didn't need salvation. Say, say that again? He did not need salvation. He's God. Well, no even though your answer is, is a good one, it's still not it. You but but it. You're, in the, you're in the ballpark, but it's something else that you're not thinking about. You're right. right. He didn't need salvation. Right. And the reason uh, to hit it dead on the nail, he wouldn't be a Christian because Christians are the ones who follow Christ. Follow Christ. Right, right. Yeah, he's the leader. We the followers. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and your answer was, well, nothing wrong with your answer, but right. remember, uh, uh, Sister Pat, when you're talking with them uh, Hebrew Israelites or in the case of anybody else, Pastor Moss always say you use them points that, that cut oh, it off at the juggler. At the juggler, that's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said, no need, no, need, no need to leave him in the room that you got to keep dancing with him. Right. <laughs> the, the question is better counteracted as, was Jesus the way? So, so y'all understand yeah. that? Because they're not seeing it. So, right. So, Pastor, you know what I said? You, uh, right. Because they're not seeing it. Seeing it. So, in other words, what we're saying is, was G, the court, better than asking the, 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 the question, was Jesus a Christian? The, the more better way of act, asking is, was Jesus the way? Y'all answer he to that. Yeah. Yes, is he, is he is the way. He is the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right, John. Yeah. There you John go. 14, he, yeah. he declares, I am the way, mm -hmm. the truth, mm -hmm. and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And, and if he ain't the way, we can do what with the Bible? Throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. Right. I'm holding on to my Hey, what that, that glue they got that you can, what they call that glue that, that you can't, they, what they got a, the, the commercial. The crazy glue. The crazy glue, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck. Gorilla glue. Gorilla glue. Yeah, yeah. Right. Gorilla glue. Uh, it says, I have a question also. Will you believe the record God gave of his son? Facts. Facts. Mm -hmm. Jesus was a Jew born under the Jewish religion. So we have no problem with that, right? Amen. Right. Christianity did not exist before Jesus' ministry. Would y'all agree? Right. Right. I mean, I mean, exactly. right. Mm -hmm. Jesus was born the Christ, the promised Messiah. Yes. Amen. Y'all agree with that, right? Yeah. yeah. So in other words, what you're showing, you, in other words, you, you're, you're turning the table back on them to... To the facts, because they want to tell you about your Jesus, but you're examining the facts and you're working your way up. The label Christian was later attached to the followers of Christ. Was that a fact? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jesus was a Jew born under the Jewish religion. So, if Jesus went into the synagogue, <laughs> would that be a problem for us? No. No. <laughs> no. no. Was Jesus born up under the law? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's no problem for us. Nope. Right. Not at all. <laughs> His parents did things related to the to the law. Oh. That ain't no problem for us. Well, he, he lived in the time, right? He would have he he would have had to live under the culture which he grew up in. Yeah. So he that's his nationality. Mm -hmm. That was his ethnicity. Yes. That was his culture. Yeah. So that's how he lived. Mm -hmm. One. Jesus' parents done did all required by the law. Of the Lord, and that's in Luke chapter two, verses twenty-one and thirty-nine. He came unto his own, which was Judah, and his own Judah received him not. 
but as many Jews as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. He identified with Jews, says we Jews know what we Jews worship, and what, and what do you mean Because that may sound kind of crazy to them. Mm -hmm. What we're showing here, really without the, the, the Jews. Okay. And whatnot, all right. That would be one of the advantages of them seeing the scripture. Because okay. all, all we're showing is who it's talking about in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. We know that we worship for salvation is of the Jews. John 4.22. Mm -hmm. The New Testament clearly proclaims the Jewish ethnicity of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Generation. Son of David. Son of Abraham. And you can see this in Matthew one and one. So all this was related before we express it out to the to the Gentiles. Cause he come, that's why he say he came into his own. In other words, say I'm not sent but to the lost sheep. Because and what that mean is, is that it was foretold that he was gonna God was gonna send them a savior. Right. 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 So if he had a went to the Gentiles first, what could you have said about the scripture? That it was false. It, it was false. It lied. It right. contradicted the prophecy itself. Wasn't right. True. right. That's right. Facts. Jesus was a Jew born under the Jewish religion. The scripture tells us Jesus' clothing displayed the outward signs of being an observant of, of the Jewish tradition. Luke 8.44, Matthew 14.36, Numbers 15.37-39. And once again, that's Luke chapter 8, verse 44, Matthew chapter 14, verse 36. And Numbers chapter 15, verse 37 through 39. Let me ask a question. So, they said, well, we should do what Jesus did. We should wear what Jesus wear. That's what many of them want to say, right? Yeah. So, did Jesus mm -hmm. wear, uh, it's cold outside. You got, well, you got gym shoes on. Mm -hmm. I got my heavy shoes on, shoes on. So then we should all take our shoes off and go get sandals. Uh, yeah, no. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But, we, but, we, but, we, but, we, but shouldn't we be doing what Jesus did? It doesn't make no sense. sense. Yeah, no, I'm not putting. You're in a different there. time. You're in a different age. It has nothing to do with salvation. Mm -hmm. The clothes that 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 you wore. Exactly. Different okay. temperature too. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Says he observed the Passover of the Jews. John, chapter two, verse thirteen, and Deuteronomy chapter sixteen, verse sixteen. He also observed the Jewish feast, the dedication, the booths, etc. John. Chapter 5, verse 1, chapter 7, verse 2, and chapter 10, verse 22, all in the book of John. He taught in the Jewish temple, Luke, chapter 21, verse 37. Why is all this significant? Because the Hebrew Israelites are going to come at you with that. You see, you understand, he taught in the temple, he taught in the, he taught in the synagogue, he did this, he did that. And, and he only did it to the Jews. So you got to know this background. Right. You got to know what was, go what was going on. So my question, I got a question. Mm -hmm. So are they trying to say that we're supposed to be going into synagogues? Well, they're not saying that you're supposed to go, because they don't even go into synagogues. Exactly. Right. No, but they do say yeah. that you're supposed to wear certain clothes right. and that you're supposed to be up under the, uh, the Mosaic law and you have to keep the Sabbath day all the things that was stipulated that God gave to Israel, they're saying that those things have came over into today. Mm -hmm. right. So Jesus okay. kept the feast, so you should be keep keeping the feast. Mm -hmm. Now, is there anything wrong with keeping the feasts? No. no. Until you do what? Mm -hmm. Try to make other people keep the feasts. <laughs> Until you make it a legalization. There you go. Until you say you must mm -hmm. keep the feasts. If it's something that you that you just want to do, if it's something that you just voluntarily want mm -hmm. to do, as a you know as as a, or, or glory or honor to God, mm -hmm. fine. If that's, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But then what what makes it wrong is when you man when you make it mandatory, right? Mandate, mm -hmm. right. right, right, right. Like keeping the Sabbath day, right, right. So of course, uh, you know, it's it's customs and things that we do um, to to today. That's a part of our our custom now <laughs> um i you could disagree with me uh, uh disagree because i you know like sometimes we use the example of the 
the the pig feet and the hog maws and all that. Where they say, well, white folks ate that too. But many times, the black folks, I, I don't eat them neither, Pastor. I see them in the chicken <laughs> head. I don't eat them neither. <laughs> but many times, they were eating it because you didn't have no choice. Right, exactly. Right, right. So, right, right. right. So, uh, uh, um, but so, and then when you could do better, you did something different. Right, man. Right, right. Folks still can do better and they still eat. And still they eat, right, right. 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 I, I told you about how I, I preached my uncle's funeral last Thursday, man, mm -hmm. in Cincinnati. And uh, one of the stories I told, I was dealing with grief, and this is going off the of beaten trail a little bit, but he said, he, I was talking about grief, and in, in the analogy I got, I talked about how we serve the kind of God that wastes nothing. Not even great, not even grief. Mm -hmm. God uses mm -hmm. our grief, He uses our sorrow to get us to a place of surrender, a place of brokenness. And God uses broken things, right? He uses broken clouds to give rain. Mm -hmm. He uses to, to rain to, to water the soil. Mm -hmm. He uses broken soil to give crops. He uses broken crops to give grain. He uses broken grain to make bread. He uses broken bread to feed us. <laughs> so he uses broken things. He uses broken people. And it's yeah. when we're broken that God uses us. And that's when we're in our grief. Right. right? And so I talked about how, um, uh, it reminded me of just, you know, you know, nobody wants to go through grief, right? We don't mm -hmm. want to experience sorrow. That's, that's, mm -hmm. you know, we want to run from it. But it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. And so I talked about one day I came in the house and I saw on the kitchen table, I saw this most disgusting, hideous thing I ever seen. It was a hog head. And man, I looked at that hog head and I said, man, mama must be in a bad mood. Let me stay out her way before she do to me what she did to the hog. <laughs> you know, and so I began to sit back on the side and I looked as mama took this hog head, man, and the teeth was in it and uh, the eyes was in it, the hair was in it, man, and I, this hideous thing. I looked at mama took this hideous thing and she began to manipulate it. She began to work with it. She began to form it and, 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 and metamorphosize it, right? Mm -hmm. And turn it from a hog's head to hog head cheese. <laughs> and yeah, so when people, when people came to, to, to the house, they would take some and she would give it to them in the hand. They put it in their mouth and they'd be like, mm, this is good. Mm, that's, boy, that's old enough. Delicious. Mm, girl, you sure enough put your foot in. When I heard him say that, yeah. I said, but let me stay away from mama's foot too. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, point, the, the point I'm making is that God takes... The, the, the things that are in us that's, that people might look at and that we might see as hideous mm -hmm. and messed up and, and just down out. And God uses that. He uses all of it. He wastes right. nothing to get glory out of it. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one other thing, too, on here back here where it talks about uh, he observed the Passover. Uh, we taught, uh, Mr. Andrew taught, uh, it's been a few, uh, several lessons ago when we looked at it. We also saw that the Gentiles, when they came in among Israel, they also <laughs> the uh, did the Passover. If they circumcised themselves, yes. then they, they kept, kept the Passover, the thing. Passover <laughs> too. So those things that you need to know, and all these things we're talking about is in our, in our Bible. You may not get it all overnight, mm -hmm. but a lot of the stuff, I liken it to what my, one of my teachers used to say about the computer. Um, the computer is simply... A lot of information. Mm -hmm. We're not letting no scratch that. It's a lot of data. Mm -hmm. But when you massage it, almost something what you said, when you massage it, then it becomes useful information. We've been into a lot of church services, a lot of Bible studies. So we got a lot of data in our head. But but when we get to work with it, then it becomes useful information for us to be able to pull up and to answer after people. A lot of times it's in us. Mm -hmm. We just don't know how to pull it up right. to be able to get a, a, a you know a sound answer right. to whatever is on the table. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Are we still looking at facts? All right. Jesus was a Jew born under the Jewish religion. The scripture tells us he taught in the Jewish temple. Luke chapter 21 verse 37. He taught in Jewish synagogues. Luke chapter 4 verse 15. As a Jew, it was Jesus' custom to go to the synagogue on the Sabbath. From his birth to his, to his last Passover, Jesus lived as an observant Jew. Luke chapter 22, verse 14 and 15. Do me a favor, go to Luke 4, 17. And that's, that's evident there that, you know, we don't come against the law. Jesus said he didn't come against the law, right? Right. So, so if Jesus lived 
in observance of the law, right? Mm -hmm. We show that the law is good. Right. We, mm -hmm. But the law still, even though it is good, the law is insufficient mm -hmm. to make us righteous. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. But but the point of it with that law though, he did something that nobody else could do with the, the law. He fulfilled it. Right, he, he fulfilled, fulfilled it. it. Right. But go go to Luke, I think I think it's four seventeen. Mm -hmm. If it's not that then I have to say what's looking at it. And he was had and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Could anybody else do that? No. So he what he out. did <laughs> in the synagogue, mm -hmm. <laughs> he took the law mm -hmm. and showed you where it was talking about him. Yeah, exactly. Nobody else can do that. <laughs> Come on, now, now, now you preach. Right. And no, then, nobody <laughs> else can show anybody. Where, that's me, y'all. That's me. <laughs> nobody. Right. And then uh, to finish that verse out, eighteen, it says to proclaim liberty to the captives mm -hmm. and recovery of sight, sight to, to the blind, blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Mm -hmm. right. See, the law, the Bible tells us... And to, and, and to oh, preach well, the acceptable okay. year mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Right. So, so the Bible tells us in John, and I don't want to get moved away from this here, but John 5, 39, he tells you that, the, he says scripture, but we know the scripture is the law and the prophets. It's all of it. Mm -hmm. It tells you that it, witness, it, it, it witnesses me. Right. Talking about him. So the law. <laughs> well, that's what he said. He said, "You think you have life?" He said, "You read scripture. You think in, in that you have life, and they are they which testify of me." Talking about the scripture. Yeah, that's and, right. And, 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 right. See, and I, I bring that up because we used it wrong. See, because well, in, in the organization I was in, we said when we got to it, we say, "Yeah, and they always talking about me." Oh Jesus, oh Jesus! But you won't come to me because you got to come over there where we are. Uh -huh. You understand? Know to, to get it. And when I learned better, it wasn't even talking about the people. <laughs> it was talking about the scripture, witnessing him. That's right. Amen. They was his witness. They witnessed him. And, and, and again, we pointed out again, what's those scriptures? The law and the prophets. Sometimes it's also called uh, 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 Moses and the... It's a couple of titles, but I can't remember all of them. Read 539, what you said. John 539 says, Search the scriptures, yeah. for in them ye think ye have eternal life, mm -hmm. and they are they which testify of me. That's Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he's saying that the scriptures testify of him. Amen. Right, well, right. The ones that will lead you to eternal life. He says, Search the scriptures, for mm -hmm. in them you yeah. think mm -hmm. you have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And they are they. Mm -hmm. The scriptures that give you eternal life are the ones that testify, that testify of, of me. me. Right, right. Again, right. Jesus is showing mm -hmm. the scriptures talk about me, y'all. Right, right. And, and that's only, what and who else who mm -hmm. else really have said been able to take you to the word and be able to show you, listen, this scripture is talking now, about. Now, me. now be careful and, and though, Pastor, because you know you got some crazy folks. Uh, no, what no, his no. name uh listen. what his name uh the one that died uh Said that Jesus didn't finish the work and he came to replace it. Uh, moon. What? So yeah, moon. Yeah, moon said Jesus uh, uh, failed his mission. Who did? Uh, um, yes, yeah, Reverend Sun Young Moon. Oh yeah. Him. Yeah, but the yeah. only thing, the only thing about it is Jesus actually did fulfill it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, right. They'll say it. Oh yeah, you right. Because they, they, they keep right. me scratching my head. Yeah. I mean, listen, we got <laughs> Kenneth Copeland in this thing. I'm just as much. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's Kenneth Copeland, and what if they say that Jesus going to the cross was not an atonement for us? Mm -hmm. It wasn't enough. So, so nothing, so nothing should surprise. I mean, even though it. Do I have to be honest? Nothing should really surprise us because the Bible already warned us right. yeah. of, of, of these things. Right. So what for us? Mm -hmm. We need to just be prepared to go to the scripture and let the, mm -hmm. let you know be able to pull those scriptures and let the scriptures speak for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. You say, didn't know it. Mm -hmm. So let's. Uh, Do we finish this? Yes. Uh -huh. We still looking at facts. Jesus was a Jew born under the Jewish religion. Notice how we keep winding out. We started with one page and we, we, we started drawing on it. The scripture tells us, Jesus continually affirmed the authority of the Jewish Torah and the prophets. 
Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 through 20. Also, Jesus' teaching was respected by other Jews of his day. Luke chapter 4 verse 15. Oh, that what pastor just went. Mm -hmm. uh, teaching in the Jewish temple, if Jesus were not a Jew, his going into that part of the temple would simply not have been allowed. Acts right. chapter 21 verses 28 through 30. So do the do they assert that Jesus was not a Jew? They do assert that he was. Oh, they, they say he was a Jew. Yeah, yeah. And we, you know, just showing that we agree. Yeah. But that is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, but they want to try to say that, that you know, they try to back you in the corner of saying that you. Well, he was black, though. Right. They added that he was black. Right. Yeah. And what they try to want to try to trap you, they want to take, tell you that they want to put words in your mouth to, to say that he didn't, he didn't, uh, um, they'll say like he didn't obey the law. Or he didn't, uh, this putting it in your mouth. Well, but that's tricky when you say that he didn't, didn't obey it because for us, he's fulfilling it. Right, he did obey the law. He did obey it. If, he did. When, when and he, he lied. Because the only way he could not obey the law is he had to lie. Mm -hmm. He had to steal. He had to disobey the law. Well, well see, for me to read, right. I said it like that because that would almost be like, and that's good, the good. I like the way you carried it because it would almost be like God going against his nature. Right. But how can God go against his nature? Good. Right. So, the premise of what he's saying is when he's saying that they say, well, Ju Jesus kept the law. So, in saying that, they saying, well, he kept it, we keeping it, you should keep it also. Right, yeah, right. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Right. But now, this is my thing. I want to get back to the black thing. Because, how can you be, I mean, I guess you could be biracial, you know, but Jesus wasn't biracial. Right. So, Jesus was a Jew, he wasn't black. And then, right. I mean, he could, be, he could be a dark-skinned Jew. But he wasn't yeah. African. See, see, but for for me, I, here's why I won't even go that with, with him on that. Mm -hmm. Because then they got to go back to to roots. Then you got to take a look at Rahab. But that's, All their, these but that's their argument. I mean, one of the things we gonna we, one day we're gonna have to take a look because we got to defeat that lie because it's a lie that Jesus was African American or well, not African, but he was African Jewish. He wasn't. He was 100 percent Jewish. Yeah, Jew. Now they don't say he was an African Jew. Well, he was black. They say Jesus was black. Yeah, but but remember this. But there's there. Okay, again, because really what they're trying to do is drop the black. Which is oh, it's a game that they, how they, how they, they, okay. it's a game that they're playing. They would most most time on our comments, some of them won't even reply to us if you say black Hebrew is like. Because now what they're doing, they tell me don't even don't even answer that, don't even address that. Okay, so then so so. Are they getting away from this, from from the hatred of the white man? No. No. Okay, we'll, we'll oh. be back to that. No, but your questions are good. Right. It's, it's like it keep you going around and saying, that's what I'm saying. Right, and like, so what I tell them, I say that when you stop trying to use Re Re Revelation 114 to show that Jesus was a black man, then I'll stop calling you black Hebrew Israelites. Right. Because you yeah. want to take and they say, say that. The, the, the uh, American blacks are the tribe of Judah. So, hmm. let me... They, He's still right. trying to connect it. Right, right. right. Either way it goes. So they think that it'll make them more look more authentic if they drop the black mm -hmm. and just say he will. See, because they want to be more. They want because they know that you ain't gonna find black Hebrews like the scripture. Right. So they want to try to make it be more authentic to, to, to the scripture. But but we see you behind the scene. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 You still can't yeah. get away from Deuteronomy yeah. twenty eight sixty. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So. right. And, and 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 again, and you know, you all may not be saying it, but I know some say, well, why do they keep talking about this? Because it's spreading. Mm -hmm. You got you yeah. got pastors that's talking about this, the same thing. So they'll say they're not a black Hebrew Israelite, but that that it's the same thing that we saw happen with um with uh, the word of faith movement. Mm -hmm. It started moving mm -hmm. from from word of faith. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying it in the Baptist church. They're right. saying it in the the other. And and, and, and the reason that is because season. nobody paid it any attention. Yes, like, yes, you know, yes. No, no, you know, mm -hmm. well, I plead the blood of Jesus. So, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Name mm -hmm. it and claim it. Mm -hmm. But nobody said, oh, that sounds nice. Mm -hmm. oh, that, that's not, and so now, and now it's done spread up and everybody's saying all this garbage and none of it's biblical, mm -hmm. none of it's true. All, you know, it's just that little drip. You know, you don't deal with the drip. Now you got a, a busted pipe. Mm -hmm. you, gotta, you gotta deal with it. Amen. Okay, let's go to the Father. Oh, what was that? Oh, oh, you finished this one? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Jesus' purpose was not to... Oh, oh okay. 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 somebody did wrong on my screen. All right. Jesus was the Jewish Messiah born under the law. 
The scripture teaches us in Matthew 5.17, the word abolish in context is set in opposition to fulfill. Christ came not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen. Right? One, Jesus' purpose was not to act as an opponent of the law. His goal was not to prevent the law's fulfillment. Rather, he revered the law, revered the law, revered the law loved the law, obeyed the law, and brought the law to fruition. He fulfilled the law's prophetic utterances regarding himself in Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And, and Luke 4, 15, 15, 16, 17. 16, 17. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christ fulfilled the demands of the Mosaic law, which called for perfect obedience under the threat of a curse. See Galatians chapter 3, verse 10 and verse 13. And, 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 and that's really important, right? Because the scriptures tell us that for he became for he, he became the curse for us, right? Mm -hmm. So Jesus became the curse. He took the curse for us so that we could become the righteousness of God in him, right? So although he had committed no sin, mm -hmm. he fulfilled the law. In other words, he did everything that the law required. He never committed one sin. I mean, that is totally beyond our comprehension. Can you Amen. really say, anybody that's online, or anything, can you really say that you can even fathom how it feels, what it would be like to never commit a sin, period? None. Period. You would literally have to always be aware of all God's law and be be conscious of it so that you could avoid everything. We, we, you gonna I mean, stop that you? is... Hold on, oh, no, another question. You gonna stop your own thought process? Come on. You can just think <laughs> yeah, wrong right, that's what and you can sin. If it's, just that, it's not gonna you know, but, but see, that just shows you the power of who he was. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that he did it. So, you know, we, we, we cannot mitigate the law. The law is good, but we can <laughs> never be justified by it. Right, right. And, and then the day, and I'm not prepared to go in, I'm just telling to you from vocab, he was talking with the guy and he was talking about, they even want to say that Jesus was regenerated. In other words, that he was Solomon, <laughs> wow. and then he was regenerated, and they go to Titus. So, so you, Titus you mean, three. You, mean you, know, you, know, you, you mean reincarnated? No, regenerated. How yeah. they, they do and what they do, they use it. Way. They use, yeah, yeah. That's what he was talking about to, yeah. to, today. And he it's said, play you know script. how he say uh, uh, when Jesus said about uh, John, say he was I, he was uh, Isaiah, like he okay, right, right, okay. right, 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 right. And so I'm not prepared to go farther on it, but you. as you I made me you. think, no, the stuff you. that they say, mm -hmm. they scriptures that that's plain to you, <laughs> they take it <laughs> and they 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 morph it, into yeah. whatever they want yeah. it to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, verse uh, number four, three. He fulfilled the law's prophetic utterances regarding himself in Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Christ fulfilled the demands of the Mosaic law, which called for perfect obedience under threat of a curse. Galatians 3, 10 and 13. In this sense, the law's divine design will ever, will ever have an abiding effect. The law will always accomplish the purpose for which it was given. That's what we said the other night, right? Mm -hmm. And see, what they fail to understand is the purpose of the law. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's to show you your sins, right. your transgressions. Right. That, that, that's it's not the testimony. Well, right. Yes. It expound on those of us who might be missing, because to me, the law was showing us we could not do it. That's what you got. Just how wretched we are. Amen. You saying the same not, thing? That sounds good to me, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. That's, that's 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 what that's what the purpose of the law is. When the when when God said, you know, Paul talks about it. He said, I had not known sin except it had been for the law. I didn't know right. that. I didn't know that. You know, it's just like when you have a child, and and you tell the child, don't touch that. It's hot. Well, the child really don't know what hot is until they touch it. That's true. And Amen. then when they touch it, they know, oh, that's what hot is. Yeah. Well, that's what the law does. I didn't yeah. know what cussing was until I cussed. Oh, well, that's cussing is. So, you know. so then let me ask the question to, to those that's out, out um, I almost said radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Uh, um, so is, uh, do we use the law today? Yeah. yeah. Well, Ex I say we do. Yeah. Okay, explain how. We use it because the greatest 
with the greatest commandment be love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind and heart and body. And that's commandment. Well, the other, well, well, he said to well the two command greatest commandments. Well, Jen, let me let me let me back it up. Let me let me kind of clarify a little bit a little bit more because. Law just by itself, because there's a lot of things to go with law. So somebody, somebody should ask right. me. Y'all been mm -hmm. the pastor Mosque, you, you, you should have told me to define my term. Mm -hmm. So let's say the Mosaic law, do we use it today? Any of it? We still follow, well, we have the Ten Commandments, I don't know. So you follow the Ten Commandments? I try because they go with the law that got G Jesus laid out. Think, think about it, because I know I know it's something that you know that that, that that you're not thinking about. Do you follow the Ten Commandments? Yes. Well, no. Uh oh, oh my it. wife is in the camp with yes. you. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, because well, if if the law pointed us to Christ, then then we following Christ. We following the law. No. Okay. Y'all think y'all talking? Y'all ain't giving me no scriptures. I'm getting okay. Here we go. And I'm gonna help you out for the second time. We ain't gonna go there. I'm gonna have Pastor straighten this up. No, go ahead. You hit your question. <laughs> what? Uh, oh, oh, me? Do I use the Mosaic Law? Yes, I use the Mosaic Law to show people the transgressions of their sins when I'm out evangelizing. That's what I use the Mosaic Law for. Mm -hmm. But I am not up under the Mosaic Law that was given to Israel, and that is not instituted for me. Right. So, so in other words, the law is still good, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The law is holy. Amen. And that's the purpose of the law, to point people to Christ. So in that sense, you use the, the law. Now, again, you want to kind of get be careful when you start saying the Mosaic law because the Mosaic law carries the fringes. It carries a whole lot of other things. Right. So mm -hmm. all this is so you got to be wise in your answer to that. Yeah. No, you do not keep the Ten Commandments, wife. You I just... I, yes, you did. Yes, you said you said it. Yes, you said, said, you yes, said you it too. Said, but, but that's okay. I own For a second, it. I own you carried it to the Ten Commandments, but that's okay. That's okay because we we. But, but, so, but, but 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 she did say that she, you know the law points us to Christ, so therefore we use the law. Right. You know, but right. but the, the 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 point is is that what they're saying is that though we still though though we still honor the law and we still recognize the law, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we're not under. The yeah, law. law, so we're not we're not under a legalistic obligation to do or not to do, right? Mm -hmm. We're under grace, and because of grace, right. and and because of the Spirit of God that lives in us, who has purchased us, we're led and surrendered to obey Him, which He leads us in God. Because you know, one of the things that like like because the, the guy was like, well, uh, what was that? What was that? Friday? The guy was like, well. What was they doing in Rome? What was they doing in Iconium? Oh, right? yeah, yeah. And 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 I was listening to that man. The Holy Spirit said because I sent them there, yeah. you know. And and so that's what we have to be about. We're led by the Spirit of God, yeah. not by the letter of the law. Yeah. Amen. We're under the law of Christ. We're under, and that is a difference. Mm -hmm. right. You're under the law of Christ. You're under the law of faith. And we're gonna talk. We might not get into it too much tonight. Because that's a lesson within it in itself. Yeah, yeah. But but clearly you're up under the law of Christ. You're not up under the Mosaic law. And the reason you understand that you're not up under the Ten Commandments is because one of those was a sign. Mm -hmm. Which one was a sign, Val? Was a what? One of those. Was a what? One of those of uh, the Ten Commandments was a sign. A sign. It was a sign. Love the Lord thy God, honor thy mother. But I'm going through them. Hold on. Oh, well, well, we, we don't clear. I'm out there, y'all. So, so the Sabbath was a sign. Yeah, yeah. Sabbath was a sign. Right. The Sabbath well, was. well, now who? If so, so now looking back at the whole law, who did the law point to? Christ. It pointed to Christ. Right. Now you, but you brought that up. Now we got to. Do you know why the Sabbath was a sign? And the Sabbath, the Sabbath was a sign for who? The Sabbath represented who? Was pointing us to who? Jesus Christ. Right. Right. Now, be, now, when you understand, the Sabbath represented what? 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 What was the Sabbath all about? You said it earlier. Being holy. No, the Sabbath was. Christ. No, what's the Sabbath all about? The Sabbath is at what? Day of oh the law keeping the law no the, 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 what did God what what is the Sabbath the day of what worship 
Um, this is the day of rest, right? Now, in in in, in Matthew's gospel, what is that? Matthew eleven twenty five twenty eight twenty eight twenty nine. Yeah. Go go to go go to go to Matthew eleven twenty eight, and then so because you, you got to understand why 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 we said that that the, that the Sabbath is a sign. The sign a sign points to something. A sign identifies something, right? Re re. The coming uh, of Christ. Matthew. Okay, listen, he's listen to read it. it. All right, uh, chapter 11, okay, verse on. 28. What's the scripture? Matthew, Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Bow, right? Oh, there it is. Bow, right? Right. So, so it's your rest. Right. So Christ is our rest. 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 We, 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 you don't have to. You don't have to labor <laughs> anymore, mm -hmm. right? It's not about your works. If you are in Christ, right. if you are in Christ, you are in rest. You are in your Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Okay. Right. And there's a lot of other scriptures we can go into, but but that <laughs> that's, 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 that's it. That's, that's, that's it. it. There. Right. Yeah, right. That, that's so. Mm -hmm. nail, so nail on the head, kind and of. So. So that's why, you know, most of the time when they talk about the law, and you'll hear uh, Mr. Andrew and now uh, uh, Pastor uh, Alvin, we always question when he go to talk about the law of the commandment, because see what they'll do, they'll be trying to be wise. Because as soon as you say that, uh, that that you are not up under the law, they say, oh, you don't keep no God's commandments. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you say. See, they try to be tricky with it, mm -hmm. you know. So they, they use it interchangeably, mm -hmm. but because of watching their videos and talking with them, you already know where they're going. Where they trying to lead you that rabbit? What pastor call it the rabbit hole? Mm -hmm. They always trying to lead you down a rabbit hole, rabbit get you hole. down there, and then they say, "See that? <laughs> right, right, right. right." So, so that's okay. <laughs> Play it with them, but but it's like you asking them to define their term. What do you What do you mean? Yes, and then for us, and well, uh, yeah, we got a lot to cover. Yeah, do I really want to go there? I was gonna. I, I'll just kind of point to it. I think it's Matthew twenty two. Where he says, uh, um, when they, oh, when they try to test him about the which is the greatest of the commandments. Oh. Mm -hmm. Matthew twenty-two. Mark, uh, is it twenty-two? Forty. The greatest commandment, thirty-four. Yeah, yeah. It says, but, but when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, "Teacher, which?" which is the great commandment in the law jesus said to him you shall love your you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets wait a minute on how many on these two. these two on these two these two so wait a minute if the sabbath was like what they were saying how come it wouldn't be saying three well, so in other words, what you see in the ten, which you have it had that before you understand you even get the law, you have it the, the first part covers God, mm -hmm. the rest of the part covers, covers the neighbor. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Right. 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 And so when you understand that, you understand everything about love. See, they want to talk about if you can't love, if you can't love God, you put where all the fringes that you want. That's right. <laughs> right. It works. This works right. It's right. Worth it. And right. then he even bringing that. He, and then Jesus even he danced with that thing. He carried it from your neighbor to, to who your neighbor. And see, a lot of times people just see it about oh the good Samaritan. But that was really something. That was an impact of him using the Samaritans because right. he knew that the Jews hated the Samaritans. Amen. Right. And so he uses a parable that cuts them to the heart. The Pharisee crossed to the other side of the street. The, 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 again, that's why I used the analogy that I used earlier. That which you think is hideous, which mm -hmm. you think is uh, uh, boring, mm -hmm. is disgusting to you. Mm -hmm. God wastes nothing. <laughs> he, he uses that which you despise. Mm -hmm. And he, 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 he'll, if, you are, if you bring him yourself, mm -hmm. he'll transform that. Mm -hmm. And he'll use that to give you a testimony for his glory. Mm -hmm. Man, it, it, you know, but but our problem is, we don't want to surrender all of that. We we, we want to still stick to, well, what is food? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we live in Greece. And, and, and Pastor, right. I thought of a. Oh, you guys see the hand? He's getting some static. Oh no, they're moving something around. Yeah, yeah, that was good. 
Right. And I thought of another one. Jesus told you to, to pray with them to despitefully use you. Use you, right? right. <laughs> All of them. So shouldn't you be praying for Esau? But see, that, but listen, if, absolutely. If, if that's, if that absolutely. <laughs> but that's what he sent you on to, right? Mm -hmm. See, he said, well, mm -hmm. you know, if, 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 you know, if, what's the period, what's the, the, the thing where he says, well, you know, because you was like, turn the other cheek, right? He says, but, oh. <laughs> but, you know, don't, don't just love them that love you, mm -hmm. you know? He didn't do that, but you, right. you know, you know, you got to have a testimony that's yeah. greater than the heathen. Yes, right? you, yes. you know, yeah. love them that yeah. hate you, and that ain't in fringes and stuff. Right? See, see, fringes. I can go grab you some and join and throw some fringes down at the bottom of this. <laughs> you know? See, that's easy stuff to do. It is. It's, it's how much? But, how much effort is in that? Nah. Look, but when I you, but when you talking about me and I got a bad act. Come on. Lord, I need some help. <laughs> they just, they, 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 they scandalizing my name, and you say I got to love them. <laughs> the one that took and did me wrong, and he ate my door. Need some bread. Lord, help me. <laughs> You absolutely yeah. right. See, we arguing the wrong, the wrong thing. It don't even matter what day. I can go to, I can worship on, I can so-called worship on, on the Sabbath, but then I can't get along with you on, on Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> no, it, so, I ain't there's, some, there's something wrong with that. Yeah, there's something wrong with that. Where is the, where is the spirit of God manifest in that? Where mm -hmm. is the spirit? And then He says, for He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. The ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. We are to go out to individuals, not just mm -hmm. to the Jews, but to er all of the, 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 the men and women, all of God's creation, and to tell every man, and woman, boy, and girl that Jesus Christ loves them and he wants to have uh, a relationship with them. I was, I was looking for something mm -hmm. when y'all was talking about the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. And there was a verse, and it's, it's in the book of Nehemiah, one of these were, where the Samaritans had confessed that they were already worshiping the God of the Jews. Right. So then when the Samaritan woman had came to Jesus and said, Lord, this and that, even though the Jews didn't want to accept it, mm -hmm. he knew what they were already currently doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just wanted to pull that up. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he goes out his he goes in other words, he goes out his way to knock down all our biases. All of them. Mm -hmm. All of them. Right. You know. <laughs> and then we're gonna take and change we wanna change it to make the scripture uh what's the word I wanna use? Make it Conform. We, we, we wanted to conform to our lives. We, we, out, and, because, and it don't because, work for me. Because, because and that's what. Else. Listen, you know that that's where the problem is, right? See, in their philosophy, in their in their in their theology, right? They're comfortable. They're empowered in that. Mm -hmm. But see, in Christianity, you're not empowered. <laughs> right? you're, you're weak. We we have the power of the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. but that's only demonstrated. Lord, when I'm weak, uh -huh. then are you strong? Yeah, you're right, right? you're right. But see, they want to get up and be strong mm -hmm. and show you how weak you are. Mm -hmm. right. But that's how the devil does it. Yeah, yeah. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Pastor, I saw one today, and, and I, I, are y'all in line with us? Because we don't want to be talking and, and, and we lose anybody out there. Are y'all in line with what we're talking about? Uh -huh. Sister Pat? Yeah. Oh, okay. So anyway, I, uh, Mr. Andrew, you might say because you be you be watching the stuff that they, uh, up under Hebrew too, mm -hmm. and I might say it a little bit wrong. But watch this and check how clever the, the old Satan is. He puts up. He said that um, uh, you know what Satan told, mm -hmm. what a serpent told Eve that you should not surely die, mm -hmm. and then he mm -hmm. put in there about the law. You don't have to keep the law. In other words. He was comparing the, the you Christians. Oh my God! <laughs> you, did you see that one? No, oh, I should have okay. grabbed so, the screen. So it was analogous. Said, yes. It was an analogous to us being serpent. The yes. serpent which says, you know, well, you won't surely die. That's like a half truth. Uh -huh. And 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 that's the devil. In, that, and that's the devil in I say, boy, <laughs> see, they use your scriptures. Mm -hmm. And twist them. <laughs> like so that's why you have to know the word for yourself. Yeah, right? yeah. And Let's because he's, not, he's, he's talking to ignorant, he's talking to people who are susceptible mm -hmm. to be led astray. That's mm -hmm. what the devil did to Eve. Right? Yeah, yeah. So anyone who reads the text and reads the context understands that, you know, the devil. And then you study, you study uh, Zo, which is the, the Hebrew word for life, right? Mm -hmm. You study that concept. What happens is that Eve did die mm -hmm. 
She did die. Mm -hmm. Adam did die mm -hmm. in the moment that they ate of the fruit. <laughs> you know, I right. think we, we, we went over that yeah, last yeah, week, yeah, right? Yeah. When we talked about the, the Samaritan, mm -hmm. how that, um, how the, the story about the Good Samaritan, mm -hmm. how that when he left Jerusalem, he was found half dead. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're not born mm -hmm. again, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, you are half dead. Right. You're spiritually you're dead, dead, but you're, 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 you're naturally, physically alive. Right, mm -hmm. right. Amen. So we ready for our next screen? Can sure. you finish this one? Right? Yes, we did. Okay. Oh, so now before I went here, so I wanted to make sure first, because remember the big question that over it from all that we had covered so far in the, uh, was, was Jesus a Christian? So we went back and looked at his the history of him, showing how he was brought up, which we already know the answer to this. Right. <laughs> right. And the right. answer is no. No, right, 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 right. No. But but for that for the sake of them, we walked I'd say some people folks say walk the dog. Mm -hmm. We walked it all the way. So now we're gonna look at the disciples. And and then one of the okay. one of the, the basic one of the basic tenets and most of us know that, all of us should know it, mm -hmm. is that when you ask a question, you need to define a term. Well, what does the word Christian mean, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's the disciple of Christ, a follower of Christ. So yeah. how could Jesus be a follower of yeah. himself? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oxymoron. Right. 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 Was Jesus' disciples Christians? Jesus' disciples were Jews born under the law. The scripture teaches right. us in Matthew 5, 17, the word abolished in context is set in opposition to fulfill Christ came not to abolish but to fulfill the disciples were jews who observed pentecost acts chapter 2 verses 5 through 8 and passover john 6 4. the disciples were jesus's own john 1 12 and 13. john the baptist baptized the jews and some of john's disciples followed jesus john chapter 1 verse 36 and 37. The disciples said they found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Oh, he placed him in. And all these so far are who? Jews. Jews. There we go. Yeah. Keep going, Pastor. John chapter 1, verse 45. The disciples said they found the Messiah. John 1, chapter 41. Jesus personally identified one of them as an Israelite. John chapter 1, verse 47. Jesus' brother James is a Jew. Jesus' disciples were Jews born under the law. The scripture teaches us. Oh, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. That's right. Peter and Andrew. Matthew chapter 4 verse 22. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. James and John became fishermen. Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 9 verse 9. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office and he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Matthew a tax collector. Matthew the tax collector. Mm -hmm. Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 16 verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to become to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Mark chapter 8 verse 34. When, when he called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So, so far, what was the... What was the, 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 the the key in all these verses that we saw. The oh, number were Jews. They, well, they were Jews, but something else. They were Jews, and they immediately followed after. There them. you go. They so two things. You're know, right, man. They Jews, and they followed him. Amen. Jews, they followed him. <laughs> he didn't follow them. Right. They, <laughs> they, they followed, followed him. <laughs> As you said, with that definition, it gives you Christ. You got Christ and Christian. Mm -hmm. Chris stands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> followers, followers of, of Christ. Right. Right. That's right. right. John chapter 10 verse 27 My sheep hear my voice and know and I know them and they follow me So he know it's over and over and over mm -hmm. John chapter 12 verse 26 If anyone serves me let him follow me and where I am there my servant will be also If anyone serves me 
him my father will honor. Now let me ask a question here. Have we hit a verse anyway yet that, that, that we saw Christian at? No. Nope. Nope. No, no, but we still know that they're following who? Jesus. Christ. 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 Jesus, right, but Christ. Jesus Christ. Right. Jesus Christ. Right. So it's not hard Christ. when you see the term. Right. <laughs> when we get, by the time we get to where the term is, right. we know who they're following. Exactly. <laughs> Which is why the label. <laughs> Christian. Right. That's what the Christ and Christ chants, Christ followers. Right. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't a new nice. uh, and, and that wasn't a new you had uh and I might pronounce it wrong, heterogeneous. When whoever you followed, that's what they called you. They mm -hmm. added the end to it. And right. That's yeah, what they right, did. Right. Oh, you saying the, the Herodians. Okay. Yep. Herodians. Herodians. Right. Yeah. It was not the followers of Christ that coined the term Christian, but those in opposition to this new movement of Christ. Followers of Jesus were labeled Galileans. Since Jesus and most of the twelve disciples were, were from Galilee, it was a it was natural for the term to be applied to all his followers, especially since it implied that the movement was not as pure as Judean or Judaism. See uh, Luke chapter twenty two verse fifty nine and Acts chapter one verses eleven and chapter two verse seven. Nazarenes. Jesus was known as Jesus of Nazareth or Jesus the Nazarene. So it was easy to transfer that title to his followers. They were followers of the Nazarene or Nazarenes. See Acts chapter 24 verse 5. Followers of the way. It was a whole way of life. They were following Jesus' lifestyle the way he had lived and taught. Soon the term this way or the way meant Christian. See Acts chapter 9 verse 2, 19 and 9 and 23 and, ver and chapter 24, 22. And so, yeah, especially Acts 9. I, I really like that, right? Because that, that's when well, Let's Paul, go to it. You like it? Let's go to it. Yeah. Acts 9. I like that one too. I like Paul. Where do you want to read? Just read 1 and 2. 1 and 2? Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 9, okay. verse 1 and 2, says this. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him, from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Any of the way. Now that is, a, that is a term, and it was a derogatory term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that was given to the followers of Christ. That meant that they, you know, they were Christians. They were disciples. They were followers of Christ. Mm -hmm. The way, and so that's mm -hmm. that's the term. I like to be in the way. And, and, and yeah, me, me too. <laughs> and, and Pastor, we, here we in Acts nine two, but we all already know. And you mentioned it early that Jesus already told us something. For you can get here that he in John. Oh yeah. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right. So he already told you, I'm the way. I'm the way, right. I'm the way. So notice you see the theme over and over and over. Him, look at them folks of that way, following that way, them of that way. So in other words, it was a sect. They looked, they looked at them as a sect. Right. You know, but it, it, it's, it's like, you know, okay. a lot of us would know if, if back in the old days, right, if uh, somebody was a certain way. Mm -hmm. Mothers, what did that mean? If a woman was mm -hmm. a certain way, what did that Pregnant. mean? She was pregnant, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? She was about to give birth, you know. And so, you know, that that term it always struck to me because you know it's like God gave birth to me. Amen. I'm born again. That's right. Amen. I'm in the way. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the. I'm in the way. Praise God. Yeah. All right. Number four, Christians. By the time the sect movement reached Antioch in Syria, the gospel was preached to Gentiles as well as Jews. Such evangelism marked the sect as more than a new type of Judaism. It was a new religion. The Gentiles in Antioch invented a name for the new group. Since members of the group constantly talked about Christ, they were <laughs> called Christians, meaning the household of partisans of Christ. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Amen. Uh, the label Christian. Some mockery may have been intended in the name, for instance, since the Augustinians were an organized group who led the public praise 
of the Emperor Nero Augustus, the citizens of Antioch may have made a comparable Latinized name out of Christ as a joke. Similar groups included Herod's partisans, the Herodians. Christ was an unusual was an unusual and meaningless name to Gentiles, but Christos, meaning good or kind, was a common name some pagans called the new sect Christians. Thus, Suetonius wrote of the Jews being expelled from Rome in AD 49 on account of Christus. Now, before you go any farther, mm -hmm. so in other words, you can go to a what and, 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 and use it as, as a resource. Uh, history. History. Yeah, right. External. 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 Right, right. Uh -huh. External. Uh -huh. All right. We read Herod Agrippa II saying sarcastically to Paul, In a short time, you think to make me a Christian. Acts chapter 26, verse 28. The Christians themselves apparently did not appreciate the name, but like many other nicknames, Christians stuck. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, and I know y'all, but I like Obamacare. Amen. <laughs> Listen, they, they, folks came up. They tried to dog. You can dog out Obamacare, and even Obama didn't like the term. You hold your tongue. <laughs> even Obama didn't like the term Obamacare, uh, but it's a term that and it's has stuck. stuck. It's I mean, stuck. He, he tried to. Wait, wait, they tried to get rid of it. Is it getting rid of it? <laughs> it's the Affordable Care Act. It's going to yeah, I don't care what you call it. It's going to be Obamacare. Uh, right. They, it's going to so stick. But that's it's a good point. That's a good point. Right. Right. You know, but even, I mean, but even you think about that, Social Security. When mm -hmm. Social Security first came out, it was a dirty term. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, it, absolutely, man. Oh, they, yeah. they, 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 Social Security wasn't something that, that everybody wanted. They, they wanted to get rid of Social Security like more. But I bet you right now, let them try to take y'all Social Security. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, all right, here we go. All things work together for good. Genesis 50, uh, verse 20. New King James Version. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to many people alive. First Peter 4. 14 through 17 if you are reproached for the name of Christ blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you on their part he is blasphemed but on your part he is glorified yeah I'm Amen. one of them Christians That's right. <laughs> you, might mean it, you might mean it for evil but God, God means it for good, good. Amen. <laughs> But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Do they even see this? I mean, it's like, this don't even exist to them. It, it don't. Because they, they try to make us out to be evil. But I just asked a question like I asked earlier. Can you show me the uh, verses in the Bible where God speaks against Christians? Because <laughs> he, he tears the Hebrews up. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. He tears yeah. them up left and right. So... And, and, and it's you know it's not to be against the nation as the people, mm -hmm. but when you just look at it and you really try to jump on Christians, God didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Not once. Not mm -hmm. once. So, um, uh, sixteen. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. And so, in even to piggyback what you just said, right? Oh, please repeat that again. Uh, this would be First Peter four uh, and sixteen. Yet. If anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. And so, like you said, can anybody show me where God says anything bad about a Christian? He, God never does, right? He never does. But God uses the term. I mean, you know, somebody can say, well, you know, you know, the Antiochs, the, the, the people in Antioch came out with the term and it was derisive, right? We were first called Christian in Antioch, right? But... What you see in scripture, right, is you don't see the term, you don't see the person saying it in a divisive way. But you do see the Almighty taking a term that somebody meant for evil, like you said, but God purpose for good, and putting it in his, you know, his, his divine word. Mm -hmm. And then he uses the term in such a way that he says, yeah, they may have, they, they didn't even know I was using them to come up with to get a name, right? <laughs> But but I sanctioned like, this like name. Road. Come on, now. I sanctioned this name. I came up with this name, mm -hmm. and this name is going is for my glory. Mm -hmm. Christian, 
If any man suffer for being a Christian, mm -hmm. God bless your name. God, yeah. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Right. Lord, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Amen. What Christian called themselves as a group? The names by which the disciples were known among themselves were brethren, the faithful, elect, saints, believers. Black Hebrews lights? No, nope. that's not up there. It's <laughs> not up there. <laughs> okay. but, as, but as distinguishing them from the multitude without the name, Christian came into use and was universally accepted. This name Christian occurs three times in the New Testament. Acts chapter 11 verse 26, chapter 26 verse 28, and 1 oh, Peter. It's uh, oh, Acts. Please, no problem. Acts. Okay, let's start again. Acts. Mm -hmm. Chapter 11 mm -hmm. verse 26, okay. Acts 11 chapter 26 verse 28. Also, the book of First Peter, chapter four, verse sixteen. Now, let me ask. So, if he had said it once, would it made it any difference? Nope. So, so, and you know, because we know how many times we see Jew. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, it ain't the number of times he said. If God said it once, that should be sufficient. That should be. <laughs> yeah. But. Mm -hmm. What Christians called themselves as a group. Three terms were used to identify Christians collectively. Church, multitude, and flock. Church. One, one way of referring to the body of Israel in the Old Testament was simply the congregation. Groups claiming to be the true Israel spiritually rather than naturally called themselves the congregation. The term, the congregation, was used by the writers of the Dead Sea Scrolls as well as by early Christians. It is the actual meaning of the word church. Christians often refer to themselves simply as the church or the congregation, with of God being understood. The term could be applied either to all believers in the world or to any local group of them. It meant the total presence of God's people in a given location. That is why the New Testament often, often uses the singular church, even when many groups of believers are included together. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. The book of 2 Corinthians, 1 and 1. The term churches is rarely found. Acts chapter 15, verse 41. And chapter 16, verse 5. Each group or the whole group was the place where God was present. You see this in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Chapter 18, verse 17. God had purchased the congregation with the blood of his son. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Uh, the multitude. The term the multitude is similar to church as a way to describe Christians as a body. The Dead Sea Scrolls frequently refer to the many or the multitude, meaning the gathered congregation of true Israel. The same phrase was occasionally used to describe the early Christians, which is in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 32, chapter 6 verse 5 and chapter 15 verse 12 it also appears in the writings of clement of rome a.d 96 and in the shepherd of hermas second century it was probably a shortened form of the multitude of the righteous the multitude of god or some similar title but when christians referred to the multitude they meant the whole group of christians also, what Christian call themselves as a group? Flock. The simple designation, the flock or the flock of God, was sometimes used for Christians. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 2 and 3. Also, in Clement of Rome's writings. 
The title grew out of out of a common Jewish metaphor for Israel found in Apocrypha and the pseudo pigraphal writings. Oh, wait a minute. What's those pseudo pigraphal writings, y'all? Wow. Mm. Okay. Well, that's right. Man, you, man, you got some heavy hitters here, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, the, 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 the Marthians. Yeah, the Marthians. <laughs> it became a title so that a Christian referring to the flock meant the whole Christian body whose shepherd was God. What Christians call themselves indi individuality. At least nine terms were used by early Christians to describe themselves as individuals. Disciple. Followers were called by a term common in the ancient world for a teacher's pupils. Disciples. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. The book of Luke chapter 6 verse 17. The book of John 6 verse 30, verse 66. I have y'all look You scared with that one. You couldn't even really six, 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 six. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus' command to the disciples was that wherever they went in the world, they should make others into disciples. So they weren't just disciples themselves. Their job was to make other disciples. So the pastor's job today should be what? Making disciples. What? You said who? You say, hold on. Re repeat that. The pastor's job today is to do what? No. Bring people to Christ. N no. What is Oh no, to tell oh, them oh, about oh, Christ. Oh, to no. preach the gospel. No. What's the pastor's job? No. What's what? Pastor's job. Pastor. The, the pastor's what? job. What's the pastor's job? Is to What's feed the, the flock job? of God, which he purchased with his own blood. But it's the what? I, I, I wait, me wait, as wait, me as a pastor, I just really don't like. See, and and, and not to be in, in opposition with you, I just like man, because you, know, you see it today, and you agree with me. You and you and I would agree. With you. you see too many pastors, man, that believe that all they have to do is get up on Sunday morning and preach a sermon from the pulpit and then send the flock out to go and bring somebody to Christ. But you and I know, right, you and I agree mm -hmm. that the pastor is supposed to be the example. And I need you to help me with a book I want to write too right. called The Sheep Can't Go Where the Shepherd Doesn't Lead. <laughs> See, Amen. He got it. He got it. He done went on with the plug. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, but seriously, all right. Got a book stand near you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, so the pastor, the, 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 the pastor, it's every Christian's job, the disciples' job. All of us, the pastor is a disciple. The pew member, the sheep are disciples. It's every believer's job to make disciples for Jesus Christ. And but you got pastors that will preach, they that will teach their congregation. It's not my job to go out here and lead people to Christ. It's my job to preach to you. I had a preacher tell me that, man. Wow. I had a preacher literally tell me. I was at work one day, and the preacher came in, and I asked him, I said, Pastor, um, how many of your people are you teaching to, uh, you know, hermeneutics and, 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 and biblical interpretation and how to, how to, you know, share? He's like, look, Doc, he said, I'm not really, listen, I'm just preaching. It's their job to go out there and bring people in for me to preach to them so that they can receive the God. Well, see, I'm in agreement with you that, that he should be going out, mm -hmm. but it is his job to equip the saints to go out. And in that sense, mm -hmm. what right. Jesus said, going back to Matthew uh, 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 28, 19, it, it is his duty, you understand, right. to feed them. Right. And what, he, what, what I take and do, but I'm in agreement with you. Yeah, right, right. You know? Now, in, in some, some cases, now, to that same degree, because if, if you study here, study feeding us, so you may not be able to, to you know, it's almost like uh, how we saw it with, uh, with Stephen. Yeah. They said, well, we're doing this, y'all wait the table. But now we see but with Stephen, he's doing more than just waiting. Yeah, but see, but see, right. But what, what, what was that argument even with them, right? They said, I, the work that we got to do is, is greater than just us waiting on table. You know, we can't, we, we got to be studying the word and, and equipping ourselves so that we can go out and share the gospel. We can't, we cannot get caught up on, you know, washing dishes and, and all this other right, stuff. Right. We got to be ready to go out and, walk, you know, teach and, and, to and, right, and, and, right. and, and, and say so. Right. And so, you know, not to minimize washing tables, praise God, right? Amen. But, but, but I, I think that, and I know you're not saying it and mm -hmm. we're not saying this. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we that that we don't ever and I don't ever want to fall in the camp where I just began to say that you know it's 
the, the pastor's job, right, and you're absolutely right, the pastor's job is to make disciples, mm -hmm. but it's all of our job. Mm -hmm. I don't want to communicate, well, that's the pastor's job to preach. I can just come in here as a, as a pew member because you got people in the church mm -hmm. that feel like all I got to do is come in here and just sit down. But then, I mean, the pastor they haven't taught like, like and, he should. And he should be, right. If you ain't right. there, I should know what to do. I should know right. how to conduct the service. Absolutely. The same thing you're saying, uh, like I, sometimes we tell people out at the, the bus stop, well, uh, 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 I was going to get church. Well, they may not make it to church. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you should be able to tell them to do here's what you need to do to be saved. I had a member I had a member, man, she gone on to be with the Lord. And it, it was funny because her daughter called me. I like I say I was at I was in um Cincinnati mm -hmm. Thursday morning and I was uh I was at the funeral home. Uh the the, the, the uh yeah, funeral home. Uh getting ready. I just walked in, my phone rang. Mm -hmm. And I didn't recognize the number, but I answered. Mm -hmm. And so the young lady on the other end. And it was the daughter of Miss Mother Katie Jones. Mm -hmm. She going on to be with the Lord now. And I, after Katie Jones died, and I, when I met her, I was at work on, at the post office. I delivered her some, some, some pain medication one Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so, long story short, that Saturday, I, I met Miss Jones, Mother Jones. And I asked her, I said, well, do you belong to a church? You know, never met her before. She said, yeah, I, I belong to a church. I said, well, Mother, when was the last time your, your pastor been out? She said, I, about, about four or five years ago. I was like, wow. I, I was like, well, when when was the last? No, the pastor it had been about ten years. I said, when was the last time the deacons had been out to to serve you communion? She said about four or five years ago. And so I'm like, well, mother, I tell you what, I said, uh, from this day on, I will be out to serve you communion every every first Sunday. <laughs> and I for five years, I came out every Sunday, every first Sunday, and I served Mother Katie Jones communion we had church service we had worship and it didn't it, it grew because we didn't just it just you know i would just come by we would just have fellowship mm -hmm. and i was like i said i was at my uncle's funeral thursday and her daughter called and she said you know what pastor hall i know it's been a while I, after her mother died i tried to keep up with it but she wouldn't answer the phone call but sometimes you just gotta let it go right and so she called me she said you know what i need you to come by and pray for the family because i got to a place where you know my mama would I want to, you know, keep the family together and keep it in the, in the spirit that my mother would have. Mm -hmm. It'd be kept in. Mm -hmm. But had I not been, had I just been that kind of pastor to say, I'm, it's just my job to stand behind the pulpit mm -hmm. and preach, or to just be, you know, or just be at com comfortable with me preaching and just having people just come in and sit in the pews and not telling them, you got to be about saving souls and making disciples, mm -hmm. right? Then this family wouldn't you know wouldn't be moved that seed that was planted you know so that's what we have got to, and, got to and, have see, that, and that. if it and if it was more that it would set our opposition to what we see today out there in the in the streets absolutely and too often the biblical christians are missing in the street amen that's true <laughs> not, like you said not just the pastor the biblical, biblical christians, christians are missing but see that and don't you do you think that it's because of a well i mean i think that a lot of christians are scared you know that they're afraid. You know that that that, that they don't want to. You know, like that scripture we just we just read um, that if any if any person suffer as a Christian, mm -hmm. right? Peter four sixteen. Right. You know, if if, if you suffer, you've got to be. You got to have your mind made up mm -hmm. that you are willing to suffer as and a to Christian. Die. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And then could it be? Uh, say, uh, it, I think it still come back to training. Like and uh, strictly, we know they got the champs. Mm -hmm. Now I. I attended a few champs. I really didn't get my uh, ins inspiration to do it from champs. I got it from from the from the classes that the pastor Moss teach, and just talking to different ones. And then they was on Facebook talking about something that happened when they went out, and folk, and others was criticizing them on Facebook. I said, "Well, shoot! If I'm sitting up here on Facebook, I can go out." So because of what somebody else else did, it didn't. It, but if somebody still was doing it, right. and it encouraged me, you. and then I started going out with the, with them, mm -hmm. and then it got to with the Andrew, then it got with a, this one. So it's, it, it 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 that needs to be did at more church. I, that, so I'm in agreement right. with you. you right? No, I'm, no I, and, and, and so I just want to say when I said no to the pastor, I'm just, I'm not saying that the pastor doesn't mm -hmm. go out and make the disciples. I'm saying that it's the pastor. And the congregation, right, right. that all of us do, right. right. So, right. so that's all I'm saying, right.
Yeah. No big ass and little you. Right. We exactly. 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 Yeah. Exactly. We Amen. need we we one body in Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. And next, we did we finish this one. Uh, yeah. Jesus commanded to the disciples was that wherever they went in the world, they should make others into his disciples. Mm -hmm. Not only baptizing them, but also teaching them to do everything he commanded. Matthew uh, chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. It was proper for early Christians to be called disciples of Jesus of Nazareth, or simply the disciples. Acts chapter 6, verse 1, 2, 7, chapter 9, verse 36, chapter 11 verse 26 because they were carrying on the teaching of Jesus and living the life he had exemplified okay they were thus recognized as a school or living community that embodied the teaching of their master in practice the book of first John emphasizes that only those who keep Christ's commandments show real love for God that's a Chapter 2, verse 3 through 6, and chapter 3, 10 and 11. So would that be a good text to, to counterman the, you know, to say that this are, these are the commandments that Jesus told us to keep? Mm -hmm. Can we read that real quick? Sure, let's go. Where were yeah. we at? 1 John? What is it? 1 John. Uh, 2, 3, 10 through 11. Yeah, chapter 2. 1 John. 1 John. Mm -hmm. And see, and why you going there? In other words, in other words, we're going. See, in other words, we're not just going off talking about. Oh yeah, I know Christmas that. You went back and looked behind the scene. Mm -hmm. You walked it all the way up. Here's what Jesus did. Here's what the disciples did. Mm -hmm. How they did it. So you prepare when these folks go to using verses out of context. Right. You go to showing you. Mm -hmm. You know, you got some background to it. Right. Absolutely. And that's the thing too. Um, basically, what you're saying is. If you follow the storyline, you understand. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. You don't. You don't. You, you don't just read once upon a time and then go to the end. <laughs> right. Or happily right. ever after. Right. right. <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, First uh, John, chapter two, three through six. It says, "Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. <laughs> he who says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar." And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Now, I just want to you know, interject right here. And the first thing they're going to tell you is this. Jesus kept the law. He was under the law. He was born a Jew. So then you should be doing what he was doing. That's what they're going to tell you right now. But we still have to understand that that covenant was, was done away with once he fulfilled the law and that the law of the, the Mosaic law was to Israel only. But a lot of people don't know that. A absolutely. Now that's that's another nail, right? That's <laughs> right. another nail in the coffin. Mm -hmm. and, and we see that again in Acts 15 where, again, they tried to bring the Mosaic law mm -hmm. to the Gentile world. Amen. And, mm -hmm. and, and the church very clearly said, no, it was prohibited. Mm -hmm. And again, we talked about binding and loosening. Mm -hmm. The church had the authority by God to allow or to permit or to prohibit. Mm -hmm. And what the church did under the authority of divine right was prohibit the Mosaic, the Mosaic mm -hmm. law to be performed by the Gentile world, to be under Amen. that law. Amen. In other words, the law was, the, 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 the God binded the law <laughs> as it relates to the Gentile, to Gentile world, Amen. becoming Christian. And, and another thing we have to keep in mind too, you got two, di two, two different directions going. Mm -hmm. okay. Uncircumcision mm -hmm. and circumcised. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said it right. Mm -hmm. So, you have to handle both differently mm -hmm. both of them needed to be handled differently right we see and we see that in what you said with acts 15 with paul and right. james and you see it with acts 21 again paul and james right and acts 15 mm -hmm. he, he, he specifies he said because real then he's only talking about the, the gentiles right he said don't don't mm -hmm. put this on that but then 21 not that he disagreed with paul but he said now we got a whole lot of jewish believers but they still zealous mm -hmm. of the law. 
So it's like they have. So this is in their custom. Exactly. It's embedded in them. You just can't take this. Take that away from them. Over. It, it, it's, it's, and that's why. That's, that's, that's why it's so powerful to understand the walk of sanctification. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when when we are sanctified, we're sanctified immediately, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. But then we're also yeah. sanctified from a progressive standpoint. Mm -hmm. When you get born again, you are separated and set aside and made holy immediately upon the confession of your faith. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, if you had a proclivity to smoke <laughs> before you said Jesus come into my heart, mm -hmm. you're going to have a proclivity to smoke after you say Jesus come into my heart. Mm -hmm. If you had a proclivity to drink, before you say Jesus come into my heart, mm -hmm. you're going to have a proclivity to drink after you say Jesus come into my heart. But it's the, sanctif it's the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit that as we walk day by day by day with God, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit begins to clean you off, mm -hmm. to clean you up. He begins to do for you what you could not do for yourself. Oh, and so that the closer you walk with, I told you a story about, about Enoch. Okay, don't go no story. I ain't, I ain't got no story. I ain't got no story. You but, tell your pastor. But, but, but I, I ain't going to story. Wait, wait, wait. I got a teasy boy here for now. I'm like Joel Steen. He only got a story. But, That's what they be doing. But he better, he better than Joel Steen. But you know? the, the point is, Enoch walk with God, right? Enoch walk with God. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you got to understand, the more you walk with God, yeah. The more you're going to, you talked about it the other day, your speech betray you. <laughs> your speech betray you, even with Peter, right? Mm. The more you walk with him, the more you began to talk like him and walk like him and look like him. Mm. So then you turn around and you be like, man, mm. I don't smoke no more. I don't drink no more. I don't cuss no more. I don't lie no more. I don't, I don't, man, you just start talking like you look like God. Mm. Right, man. And so that's the power, that's the power of sanctification, man. Mm. That's the power of being in the presence of God. He changes you. You right. don't and, change and, yourself. And, and, and well, you know, say, Pastor, you know, a lot of people are not talking about or teaching sanctification. And in the pro right, and I was saying the process that he's talking about is what's called progressive sanctification. Right. Progressive sanctification. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But I'm just saying they're not even talking about it. Right. Progressive Amen. or any other way. Because I think too, if they were talking about it, they would have a better handle of it, and then right. they would, you know, saying try to help. In that, you know what right. I'm saying? Because there are people, there are people who are struggling with sin. Amen. Right? There, there are people right. who are struggling with the flesh, and what what helps us is the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Because the devil will take the devil will take a, a, a you know a sin a fall, and he'll cause you to give up throwing towels. But, you know, or at least want you want to give up throwing towels because you don't know that. Okay, you've been sanctified. You're holy. Listen, you just got to get up and keep walking with that's the Lord. Right, you right. got to keep on talking. You, you, God knew who you were before He saved you. He knew all about right. you, mm -hmm. and He didn't save you because you. He knew the day you said, "Lord, I accept you as my Savior." He knew you were going to be perfect. No, He knew nope. that it was going to take some time with you. That you were going to have to go through the fire, and just when the, as the gold goes through that fire, it's going to take time. But you're going to come through as pure gold, darling. You just get to keep walking you know, with the Lord. It's like, and see, and we see this thing, and this is what they miss. We see it, actually, we see it two times with Peter. Because remember Peter, the, the one is with the, with the sheep? Because remember, long before we get a Paul, right. Jesus tell you remember you have Peter, Ma right. Ma Ma Matthew yeah. uh, 28, 19? That's Peter. Oh, right, right. He told Jesus, you go to the nations. Mm -hmm. Peter, I mean, uh, Paul wasn't that in. Well, no. Right. So he was told to you to go. And yet we find uh Peter struggling uh, with our children. He would have, and then he has to <laughs> access. Then we get to another place in Acts mm -hmm. where he sits him down and have to let down the sheep mm -hmm. to explain it to him. Right. Now uh -huh. you would have, you would think that Peter would have been already, already right. By this time, <clears throat> Jesus had been dead mm -hmm. some decades. Mm -hmm. You know, this wasn't just you know Jesus died. Now next week, Peter having this. No, Jesus had been dead mm -hmm. some twenty years now, mm -hmm. and Peter still yes, P Peter still going through the progressive. 
And before that, remember, he's going to preach that bold sermon. Come on, man. All these hey, things. Hey, but he still got some on. things that God come, needs to work, come, come work him through. Right. And, and, and that's amen. what we understand. Hallelujah. And that's what they, they miss. And it wasn't. And it. that's what that's what you that's what what, what, what what Val is talking about. This needs to be you. This needs to be preached on. It needs to be mm -hmm. talked about. Mm -hmm. Because people need to know, listen, don't you give up on your walk. Mm -hmm. You keep on walking. You keep on you keep on suffering. Mm -hmm. You keep on striving. You keep on struggling. Because one day, praise God. Your perfection is gonna come. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so, uh, did we finish this screen here? Yeah. Did yeah, you finish? Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. What Christian call themselves individuality, slave. Five, that should have been individual. Yeah. I, 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 okay. My right. typo. All right. Five New Testament authors call themselves slaves or servants of Jesus Christ. But did they both? You know, have you talked to folks? Well, I ain't no slave. Yeah, they can't even when it come to God, they can't say slave. Because we too, we we're too concerned consumed with our own, you know, this culture, that we can't see ourselves in a Christian worldview, right? Slave to us, white man, you know, mm -hmm. slave ship. I ain't nobody slave, you know. Mm -hmm. But yes, you, you you got to under, you got to be a slave to Christ. You go with Christ. Wait, come on, you're talking about a slave, to, talk about a slave to God. Yeah, yes. that's how. That, I'm a servant. I'm a slave. I work for God. I'm sorry. There ain't nothing higher than that. It, it just don't get higher than that. See, but we think, but we see, but see, Pastor, what you don't understand, what you don't understand is we think that we all that. Uh, yeah, that's right. true. Lovers are your slaves. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you can't be all of that. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, and that's what, that even, even when you, when you down and out, the devil is so tricky, right? <laughs> you, you, he ain't got to let everybody get money and have bad, fine houses and, and they get lost in, in, in who they are with all this cash. Some people can look down on themselves and say, well, I ain't nobody, you know, and I ain't got a lot of money and I ain't got no friends and uh, I, I'm always struggling. So, God, I can't be used by God. God, I don't care about. Listen, the devil don't care how he get his mind, your mind on you. Whether or not it's good thoughts or bad thoughts, if he can just keep your mind on you, if whether or not it's in a praise party or a pity party, mm -hmm. if he can just keep your mind on you, he can keep you from serving the Lord. Yeah, but we got to get out of us and say, Lord, I don't care if I'm down or I'm Paul. That's what Paul said. I've learned how to abound in the Lord, whether or not I'm down or I'm up. I'm up. Whether, whether I'm full or I'm hungry. That's right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. See, it's all about him. Um, we're going to finish this screen and, and it give us a few minutes to kind of talk it out and then we'll okay. catch everything else up on the, on the, uh, Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Okay. All right. So, uh, I'll start over slave five new Testament authors call themselves slaves or servants of Jesus Christ. Romans one and one Galatians one 10 Philippians. Philippians. Okay. Philippians one and one Colossians four 12 second Timothy two and 24 I don't know if that's for first or second. Timothy one and one, James one and one, Second Peter one and one, Jude one, Revelation one and one. In many cases, the term is a synonym is a synonymous for Christian. Why would such a term become a name for Christians? In the Old Testament, God was viewed as a great king. The subjects of kings were their slaves. Since a king could do with them as he liked, the people of Israel saw themselves in the same relationship to God. They were his slaves. Often the title slaves of the, of the king meant that the person was an officer in the king's service. It was a title of honor. In Jewish literature, Moses and others were called slaves of God. Numbers chapter 12 verse 7 and 8 in Revelation 15 and 3. The term slave was thus a title both of honor and of subjugation. Certainly subjection was often meant. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 22, Philippians 2 and 7. But when applied to the apostolic writers, the term probably suggested their honored position in God's household. At the same time, it indicated their obedience to Christ. He commanded and they obeyed. Since obedience was characteristic of all Christians, slaves of Christ became a title for members of the young church. It's almost like it's almost like you hear people today, oh, oh no, I'm not going to say uh, 
Well, you know how when you get married, they say we used to. I don't know, ain't no bay. Right, right. Oh, I can't say that. I gotta, we gotta rewrite that. that. Well, the same thing when it comes to Christ, we gotta rewrite that. Oh, I, I can't say that like that. That's actually what they're what they're saying. Exactly. So, but the point of it is, you were brought with a price. That's right. All this and that that you think you got going on, mm -hmm. that if it don't be for His blood. <laughs> but you know what, Pastor? Yeah. Too, I think that, and this is why. Study is such a, a powerful thing, right? Once you learn what a word really means, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Why would I? If, if, okay, if if slave, if, it, if if the disciples were called slaves to Christ, mm -hmm. and what it meant is just be c completely committed to Christ, so that whatever He says, I'm obedient to, and I do. Mm -hmm. And if that pleases God, I'll be a slave to Christ. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. Right. Right. But because I'm not, I'm not associating my slave, my you know me being a slave as as American slavery. Mm, right. But see, people are emotional. Yeah. They allow their emotion, man, to, to get the best. Oh, of oh it. you thought, Pastor? No, no, come on, no, right back no, in. But no, 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 no. Ahead. I'm you take but it. that you are right, cause that's what the Hebrew yeah. Israelites play on. Uh, exactly. That's exactly emotion. what they play on. Uh -huh. Emotion. No, I'm with you. I, I passed the baton, Doc. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you are absolutely right. That's what. But it, because they know people are emotional, mm -hmm. and that's what the devil does, right? I mean, when you look at Eve, when the woman saw that the food was good, <laughs> when the apple was good, or the, the fruit was good to look upon, right? Yeah. It was good for food and one to make you wise. All, all of this emotional stuff, right? Mm -hmm. She did eat, and she took and gave to her husband also. And what got Adam in trouble? <laughs> emotion. It wasn't logical. Adam knew already God said don't do it. Yeah. But man, he had had some love developed for Eve. He's like, man, I can't leave live without my woman. Man. I can't, I can't go without. And so what what happens is that the devil tries to play on our emotion, and we have got to get under that. We have got to to bring that yeah. under subjection to the Word of God, yeah. and not allow emotion to override our commitment to being a slave to Christ, our obedience to God. And then in Scripture, um, we covered it back when we were looking at. It. You remember? The slave, you free now? They say, no, we don't want to go. <laughs> in, the, in the scripture. So they, now here, they, they took and put a, ho a hole through your ear. Mm -hmm. Say, well, you don't want to go? It showed that you were free. Yeah. Right. It, well, that's, and, that's, and a lot of people don't understand it. Like, now they ain't put them in both ears. Mm -hmm. okay. Or they put it in their left ear. I, put, I can't remember. I think it was the left ear. Mm -hmm. the, the, guy, the gentleman would put it in his left ear to let him know that... The, that people know he was free, but he still had family members that were in bondage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the or Bible has, has, has it all. So, so what we did, we looked at tonight. Uh, um, we looked at what was Jesus uh, um, a Christian? We looked at. Uh, uh, we went back and looked at um, the. Can't even say the word. The, the, the synagogue. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten. To, we looked at the. the uh, we looked at what the followers of Jesus was. Um, we looked at what they, what others called them. We looked at what they called themselves. Uh, Thursday, we'll look at. We, I think we got the church, and there's a couple other things in there that we're looking at. And so, what you're doing, we're getting there, and what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to go back over the ones that y'all covered last week and uh, add 21 to it. But we're gonna really chew that apart for the understanding of what we're saying from the scripture okay. of showing. Thanks, chapter 21. 21 and the 15. Okay. Right, right. right. And mm -hmm. we probably don't go back to 13 as well. well you know I mean, right, right. <laughs> and uh, because what they're trying to say, they're trying to say, they're trying to say that that Paul them, they kept the law. And I wouldn't have no problem with that to an extent. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, right. they, 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 they understood. Again, the law is not evil. Right? Yes, right. yes. So, so they wouldn't have had a problem. What did the law say? Thou mm -hmm. shalt not kill. That's mm -hmm. They, they, they wouldn't have had a problem with doing those things, right? Because they were Christians. I mean, the law is, the law is established by God. It, it, God is the, purpose, the, the eminence from which the law came out of, right? So they, it's not like they, they, they kept the law from a legalistic standpoint. They right. kept the law because the Spirit of God was in them to abide. They, you know, and, and there was no problem with it. And to what, 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 I think what you would make a reference to is that they were saying that Paul kept the Sabbath day. Right. And, and, and those mm -hmm. things, which... Right. You know, when we just look at it, you know what I'm saying? We wouldn't still wouldn't have a problem with Paul keeping the Sabbath day. But, but listen, why? Well, he, he wasn't out preaching. 
Hold that on. you had to. But just the thing, even with that, right? Mm. How many Sunday services were there in Paul's day? <clears throat> I mean, you, you gotta understand. This is this is Paul went out to different communities okay. to establish right. churches. Mm -hmm. So there were no. He went to a community and Christianity wasn't there. There were no Sunday services. Mm -hmm. But now, once they began to have Sunday services. I'm sure they met on Sunday, right. but he still went to the synagogue mm -hmm. because that's where the people, the people were. were. That's right. were yeah. and, and then not only doing Sunday, but he throughout the week, he would go to different places mm -hmm. and preach the gospel and tell them throughout the week, mm -hmm. he would share the gospel. So it wasn't just a one day a week thing, it was an every day a and, week thing. And, and, and Pastor, it wasn't that there was something wrong with the synagogue. It wasn't. The problem was the Jews wasn't going to let you preach Christ there. Exactly. But he did. But that's I mean, what he, what he right. did. But that's but what I'm talking about you can do it in Pico. They come. They followed him he, from city to city. Oh, he going up there. We but, going up there. To but, this, but this is the kicker. Mm. They gave him the mic, so to speak. Mm. <laughs> right? When they, when they recognized that Paul and Silas were there and they were visitors in mm. the synagogue. They gave, hey, you, do you have anything that you want to, you know, anything mm -hmm. you want to add to our discourse? Mm -hmm. And, and, hey, what y'all do that for? <laughs> <laughs> like, we learned not to get a mic to them folks to make this. Right. Hey, yeah, we thought, hey, I'm so glad you asked that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and, and then the other thing, too, for that bow, and, and uh, yeah, we almost out of time here, mm -hmm. for that bow, if when you go back and read that, because they say, yeah, well, he kept the vow of the Nazareth. He didn't finish that vow. Because they tell you before he was ended, they snatched him up. <laughs> okay. So he didn't even, and we know why he was doing it, mm -hmm. but he didn't get to complete it. It tells you right in the text. Mm -hmm. And before he ended, they grabbed him. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So it didn't matter what he did. It's the same thing with these folks. It don't matter what scripture, unless God removed the, the scabs off their eyes, it don't matter what scripture you show them, mm -hmm. and whatnot. We do it because we're commanded to do so. Mm -hmm. And even though they may not see, maybe the one that's standing next to them might get it. Mm -hmm. So we just be obedient and, and, and present the scripture. But God, it's God that know whether you know what I'm saying. That it's God that that do the do the, 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 the increase that gives the increase. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so many things I fought with myself. I fought with a whole lot of things. But God will walk you down. Yeah, he will. And yes, he will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard Paul say, Amen, right there. Yeah. Paul said, He'll knock you off your high horse. So, so us ministers, we did a lot of the talking on this end. So I'll start with Sister Pat real quick. Sister Pat, you got anything you want to add? No. I know. Uh -huh. so, uh, Sister Val? Mm -hmm. Got anything you want to add? Or? This has been wonderful. Amen. All right, Amen. Uh, Sister Joanne. I've learned a lot, but it's helped me in dealing with some other things. Amen. Sometimes you can talk about something, and it can refer to something else that you're dealing with. Right, right. absolutely. Now, I have tried to deal with. Now, now I know, I know that you know you all sometimes you know you know because you're doing other things, you may not have a chance Thursday week because we pick because what we're doing now. Actually, I do this on the Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. We said so we might as well just tie it all together. Mm -hmm. But uh, and I know, uh, Sister Bell, I said you. I know you said that you got to get your computer. You because uh, somebody had stole it, so you was in the process right. of getting another one. Uh, but Sister Pat and I did. Did you get my link, Sister Pat? The email. No, I didn't see. Yeah, I sent well, it to you. you know uh, actually, you uh, know, excuse me, Sister Pat. I actually, <laughs> I got the thing for the link, so when I get the computer, it'll be. I'll be able to do it. Right. Okay. Good. Good. Well, Sister Pat, I just Thank sent you, you the, I sent you the link. Uh, yeah, I sent it. Uh, I sent it to you and who was in the church that was talking to me? I came up. Oh, um, oh, Sister, Sister uh, Donna McGrady. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sent it to y'all uh, uh, Sunday when I got home. So check your email. You, okay. should, you should have it. If you don't have it, send it. And I just resend it again. But he got the links in there to where all the. Uh, the different classes, and we try to name them, and that's what we try to get. What me and Minister Andrew have been doing real quick, as he talked to folks out there on Facebook, and they bring up something about the law. Mm -hmm. I said, "Oh, he taught this the, the tape that he taught on this one." Yeah. I take it <laughs> to link to that. Oh, they talking about uh, 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 the virginity of 
Mary. Uh, I so in other words, that's what I'm hoping to do with all our talks. Mm -hmm. So we we'll have a teacher for each one. Amen. Right. Instead of me arguing with them, let them go and watch the tape. And then get back to me. Mm -hmm. Right. Because as you as we did tonight, now tonight we read, we referenced a lot of scriptures. Mm -hmm. And we read a few. Mm -hmm. But the key to, like I said, they did. The scripture is in there. They did for them to go and see. Right. So with that being said, mm -hmm. um, uh, yep, so so Thursday, if you get a chance, you know, uh, and now Thursday and Friday, we're on at 6 instead of 7. Okay. So if you get a chance, call call in, say what you're doing. And uh, okay. if you're not, like I say, then uh, that link, you remember that link, or just call, you can always call me or call Sister Joanne, and I'll get, I'll put you, point you to that link so you can go back there and look at them because it may be something that you may want to have something that you may say oh I, I need my friend or my cousin or so and so mm -hmm. to see that you know so we all working together mm -hmm. you know and whatnot. Okay. so um Pastor you want to you well either one no matter go ahead Pastor oh okay <clears throat> Lord, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you for this uh, day, Lord, that you have given us to come forth and teach. Lord, we want to thank you for each and every person that's here now that's uh, going through the teaching. Lord, we just ask that as we yeah. separate, Lord, that you will just continue to follow us and keep us safe. Yeah. Lord, we just want to ask that you give us the urge, Lord, to continuously study, Lord, and that we may go out and make disciples to others. Yes. Lord, you said over in Luke 22 that the... Uh, that the uh, harvest is plenty mm -hmm. but the labors are few so lord we yes, pray for more labors lord we just pray that you continuously uh to pull other people towards your son lord and that they get saved lord we uh, we just want to continue to do all these things in your son's most holy and precious name yes good. amen amen you were born a male being a man is a choice not because you wear the pants or the bass in your voice no sir it's much deeper than that now that this domestic violence issue has been brought to the forefront, I'm going to have to be both transparent and blunt. You see, I know what it's like to try to control someone else's life because you can't control your own. Going to church every Sunday and God's trying to remove you from his throne. I know what it's like to be a cosmetic Christian, to front like you up but your spirit is torn down. Saying hallelujah real loud but your soul is still bound. Your fears and inconsistencies behind a mask of anger Treating the ones you say you love like a perfect stranger Now she's in the kitchen afraid for her life Just a cheap spiritual paint job over an old ragged life So I'ma have to call you out see you strong and true isn't there something we need to do have you withdrawn your eye from god's view so there is so much undone work to do have you considered your job to be through christian man where are you is your help meet by your side or is she forced to the front while you run and hide are you wrapped up in your natural pride simply unwilling to serve and stride let me bring some clarity to this point many women's hearts do bleed in hopes a real man would take the lead Christian man, where are you? to thine own self you must be true Christian man where are you are you Christian man where are you Christian man where are you Christian man Christian man where are you
yeah, yeah, yeah. 